Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another Surf Say So video. I hope you're all well. This is a requested video, so thank you so much for the request. And as the title suggests, today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest girl groups to come out of the UK, and that is Misty. So, so, so scandalous. But as always, a very, very quick disclaimer. This video is purely done for entertainment, informational and commentary purposes. It's not to mock anyone. It's not to disrespect anyone. It's purely various information I found on the interwebs put together into one easy to digest video. So as always, we're going to keep it cute. We're going to keep it polite. We're going to keep it respectful. And let's get into the video. In 1997 and at the age of 18, Alicia Dixon and Sabrina Washington met in a Fulham dance studio through Louise Porter, who was putting together a group for her production company Big Out Limited. They both worked together for a couple of years before signing to a production company to help develop their sound. However, they still felt that something was missing and that the group wasn't complete. This is according to an article in The Guardian in February 2002. Both Sabrina and Alicia worked with Louise Porter for a couple of years until they were eventually joined by Tina Barrett, who many of you know is a member of S Club 7, but we'll get back to this shortly. The duo became a trio and began performing. At the time, the group were called Face to Face. Also at the time, the group were unsigned and were still working their regular day jobs. Alicia was training to become a PE teacher at the time. Then Tina left to join the pop group S Club 7 after a successful audition and was replaced by Zena McNally who started out as a backup dancer in her hometown of Birmingham and Sue Elise Nash who had been studying a business degree at Middlesex University prior to joining the group. Eventually the group changed their name to Mystique and the group consisted of Sabrina Washington, Alicia Dixon, Sue Elise Nash and Zena McNally and after months of recording the group released their debut single Why in the year 2000. Won't you tell me why? Then in January 2001, the group released a garage remix to their debut single, Why, and soon became a success in the underground UK garage scene. Why? Why? Why the single peaked at number 8 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of 7 weeks on the chart. However, despite the group's growing success with Why, Zena decided to leave the group. In a blog post by Anika Allen, Zena explained how her initial joy soon turned to sadness. She said, Everything was fine at the beginning because it was fun. We all got to know each other because I had not met them before. But as time went on and as the months passed by, there was a bit of an unbalance in the group. I didn't really have much say and it was just making me unhappy. She went on to say, Sabrina and Alicia were there prior to me being there. There was an imbalance in the group. It was like because they'd been there the longest, the production company just leaned more to them where I had a lot of good ideas and I write a lot too, you know? I know I'm talented. It's not even that I think I am. I know that I brought something to the group, but they just weren't allowing me to bring what I had to the group. It was like, you do this, you do that. I was being a bit suppressed. It wasn't that I wanted to do everything, but if you're in a group, that's what the name is. A group, you're a team. You're supposed to share everything and be able to talk to each other and compromise but there wasn't a lot of compromise i don't know how it is now but at the time when i was in the group that's how it was going and i just wasn't happy the group continued as a trio and in june 2001 the group released their second single all i want <laughs> which peaked at number two on the UK singles chart, spent a total of 11 weeks on the chart. The single also entered the top 40 in Australia, peaking at number 31 on the ARIA singles chart, and the single peaked at number 23 in Belgium. Then in October 2001, the group released their third single, One Night Stand, which peaked at number five on the UK singles chart, spent a total of 12 weeks on the chart. The single also did amazingly well in Australia, peaking at number 17 on the ARIA singles chart, peaking at number 12 in Ireland, number Number 17 in Denmark, number 16 in New Zealand, number 14 in Norway, and number 24 in Switzerland. The group also released a US version of One Night Stand. Sensations, sensations, vibrations. At the end of October 2001, the group released their debut album, Licking on Both Sides, which peaked at number three on the UK album chart, spending a staggering 38 weeks on the chart. The album also did well in Belgium, peaking at number 28. Also in 2001, Mystique picked up the award for Best Act at the UK Garage Awards and also performed at the 2001 Mobile Awards. Uh, 
talking of awards, you performed at the MOBAs, which was great, but you picked up uh, Best Act at the UK Garage Awards. Yeah. How important are, are these things to you, the awards? Very important. They're important to us. Mm. They're important because they let us know that people are out there and they're liking what we're doing. And it's acknowledgement for us that, you know, we're doing something that everybody loves. Mm. So it doesn't matter whether we go and when we win them, but just to be nominated among the many talented acts that are there, you know, it's a very big thing for us. Then in early 2002, the group released their fourth single, Be With Me, which peaked at number five on the UK single chart, spent a total of nine weeks on the chart. The single also did amazingly well in Australia, peaking at number 19 on the ARIA singles chart. In June 2002, the group released what would be their last single from the album, Roll On, This Is How We Do It, which is the cover of the hit single by US R&B singer Montel Jordan. Roll On, This Is How We Do It, peaked at number seven on the UK singles chart, spending a total of seven weeks on the chart. The single also did amazingly well in the Netherlands, peaking at number 25. The single also featured on the soundtrack for Allergy's 2002 film, Allergy in the House. The group also won the award for Best Garage Act at the 2002 MOBA Awards. The winner of the Best Garage Act is... Misty! <laughs> In the same year, the ladies performed at the 2002 Brit Awards and were nominated for Best Newcomer. Also in 2002, Mystique won the award for Best Artist at the UK Garage Awards. They won the award for Best Band at the Maxime Women of the Year Awards and the award for Best Dance Act at the Capital FM London Awards. Also in 2002, the group supported reggae artist Shaggy on his UK tour. The group also opened the Queen's Jubilee concert at Buckingham Palace, performed at Glastonbury and Creamfields all in 2002. The group then went on a short hiatus. In March 2003, Mystique returned and released what would be the group's biggest hit to date, Scandalous. Which peaked at number two on the UK singles chart, spent a total of 11 weeks on the chart. The single did peak at number one on the UK hip hop and R&B chart, spent a total of one week at the number one spot. The single also had international success in several countries, including peaking at number three in Scotland and Ireland, peaking at number four in New Zealand, number nine in Australia and Denmark, peaking at number 11 in Greece, number 15 in Romania, number 19 in Belgium and Finland, number 25 in Hungary and number 27 in France and eventually peaking at number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100 over in the US and number two on the US dance chart in 2004. The hit single Scandalous was featured in a Coca-Cola advert or commercial and featured as the soundtrack for the film Catwoman starring Halle Berry and was on the non-stop pop FM radio station in the video game GTA 5. A reworked version of the hit single was used for a Giorgio Armani advert or commercial for the fragrance Armani Code. Scandalous. In August 2021, Scandalous was featured in a Korean Samsung advert or commercial for the Galaxy Z Fold 3. The group performed Scandalous on an Italian TV show in 2003. And in April 2003, the group released their second album, Eye Candy, which peaked at number six on the UK album charts, spent a total of 22 weeks on the chart. The album also managed to reach the top 40 in New Zealand. Then in June 2003, the group released their second single from the album, Can't Get It Back, which was a remake and remix to the unreleased single from US R&B trio, Black. The single peaked at number 8 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of 9 weeks on the chart. The single also did amazingly well in Ireland, peaking at number 14. Also in 2003, the group performed at the Capital FM's Party in the Park. And at the V Festival in Chelmsford. In November 2003, Mystique released the single Style. Which peaked at number 13 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of five weeks on the chart. Also in 2003, Mystique were nominated for a Brit Award. And at the 2003 Mobile Awards, the group collaborated with US rapper Redman to perform a fusion titled Something Scandalous. <laughs> A 
Approaching the end of 2003, it was announced that the group had been signed to front sports brand Reeboks, Sounds and Rhythms of Sport Campaign in the UK. In 2004, Mystique began touring the US after the release of their single Scandalous and appeared on TV shows such as Pepsi Smash, Carson Daly and Jimmy Kimmel, according to the blog rareandobscuremusic.com. In the same year, the group released their compilation album in the US and Canada, titled Mystique. The album contains a selection of songs from the group's 2001 album Licking on Both Sides and their 2003 album Eye Candy. The album Mystique peaked at number 4 on the Billboard Heat Seekers albums chart. However, between 2004 and 2005, Telstar Records, the record label Mystique was signed to, dissolved, leaving the group in limbo. That same year, the group would announce that they were splitting up and release what would be their their final album, which was a compilation album, Greatest Hits, but contained a new track titled Shoo Shoo Baby, which was a cover of the Andrew Sisters 1940 song. Greatest Hits peaked at number 28 on the UK album's chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. Shortly after this, the group disbanded. In an interview with Matt Haycox in September 2020, when asked why the group disbanded, Sabrina explained that the reason the group split was, number one, her dealings with racism whilst being in the group. She said that her management at the time told her that as a black girl of the group, she cannot get the front cover. She was also told that she was not aesthetically pleasing. Number two, she confirmed that their record company at the time went bust. She also said it was the right time for the group to break up. However, according to an article in the Mirror in April 2021, the reason for the split was allegedly due to Alicia quitting the group to go solo. In 2011, it was reported that Mystique was in talks to reform for a comeback tour, but Alicia Dixon denied the rumour altogether two years later. She stated that she would never rule out a reunion though. In December 2019, it was reported in the Daily Mail that Alicia had snubbed a request by Simon Cowell to reunite the group in a bid to help the X Factor brand. It was claimed that allegedly negotiations broke down the week prior as it was revealed that the group would not be paid. Allegedly, one of the band members asked what the fee would be and was told that budgets would be too tight, so if they wanted pay, then it wouldn't be able to happen. In an article on heart.co.uk in March 2020, Alicia spoke on the potential Mystique reunion. She said, no, not at all. Maybe reunion for lunch. She added, at the moment I'm making my own music and as is Sabrina, so we're all doing our own thing. I've always said never say never, but I'm kind of getting bored of saying never say never, but that is the honest truth. On the 8th of January 2021, it was the 20 year anniversary of Mystique's first hit single, Why? Again in February 2021, when asked if the reunion would be happening anytime soon, Alicia said, We haven't discussed a reunion if I'm honest. We do talk, we do communicate, and we've always said never say never. There's nothing in the works right now. Alicia went into further detail regarding why their record label went bust and why she wanted to leave the group when she appeared on The Dotty Show on Apple Music in October 2021. She said, I don't know how many people know this, but we started working on a third album. We were in America. Scandalous was a top 10 radio hit in America. Whilst we were out there, having success with Scandalous, our record company in the UK went bust. A lot of people blamed Victoria Beckham at the time because they were an independent label. They were signing all these acts. There was this whole thing in the media because they've signed Victoria Beckham. They were a tiny label and they'd spent a fortune signing her. So anyway, cut a long story short, they went bust. We're in America, we started working on a third album, but that was the point when I decided I wanted to leave the group. So that's why we didn't do a third album. I spent several weeks debating it with my close people. It wasn't a decision that I made lightly, but we got offered another deal. We got offered a major deal. I knew if I signed that deal, I'd be tied into the group for several more years. I thought, here's a clean out. Here's a way without me having to fight. I can just walk away. It wasn't that I wanted to be a solo artist. It wasn't that I was in the group thinking, it's my time now. I genuinely needed time out. It was a really intense eight years of my life and it changed my life. Had I been happy because to me, well-being is more important, I would have stayed. She added, there were conflicts within the group. We've been on an emotional roller coaster as a group. It's just an intense relationship. We've had moments where we've not connected and we've not got on. We've been very respectful of one another in the sense that after all these years, we've maintained dignity. Anything that's ever happened with Mystique, we've kept it very private and between the three of us, we still communicate to this day. Mystique are definitely one of the biggest girl groups to come out of the UK. They had seven consecutive top 10 singles, two platinum albums, and have sold approximately 12 million records worldwide. Honestly, it would be nice for Mystique to reunite. And as I've said in previous videos it is not unusual for groups to get back together even if it's for a one-off performance but let me know what you think should mystique get back together or do you think it's best for them to move on with their individual projects i'm coming out with a video on that one 
and that brings us to the end of the video i hope you've all enjoyed for those of you who made it this far thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed don't forget to like the video share the video subscribe and comment down below thank you again for the request and i will see you all in my next video over and out